John Jay's wife was Sarah Livingston, and growing up in a political household, she was, if anything, more political than her husband. When you look at the people who attended dinner parties at the Jay's house in New York City, it's a who's who of members of Congress, foreign diplomats, prominent merchants, foreign visitors, and I believe that a lot of the, the groundwork, if you will, of the, the new constitution was laid around Sarah Livingston Jay's dinner table. The Federalist Papers are an amazing document because they were written for one purpose, to get votes in favor of the Constitution in a hotly debated election. And yet, almost instantly, they became a, a resource, a Bible, if you will, for those in favor of the Constitution. They were reprinted throughout the United States. They were quoted in other state conventions, they were printed in book form, and very quickly they became the go-to source for judges and others considering questions about what does the Constitution mean on this particular issue. The, the letters which we have in the series from Jay's pen are, are beautiful, poetic um, statements about, about America and about how it is a band of brothers that must stick together rather than fragment into pieces. How is John Jay different than the other founders? One, he serves continuously from before, what we think of as before the revolution, 1774, the first Continental Congress, right up through 1801. Um, most of the other founders had time off. You think of Washington, for example, at the end of the Revolutionary War, going home to Mount Vernon. Jay had no time off. The second is the immense variety of things that he did. He had senior judicial positions, both in New York and as Chief Justice. He had senior legislative positions. He was the President of the Continental Congress. He had senior executive positions. There aren't a lot of precedents from the Jay era of the Supreme Court that are cited today, but he did help to get the court started on the right foot. He helped to set the precedent that the court would not decide advisory questions. Um, he rejected a request from Jefferson for an opinion on a variety of questions that the Secretary of State was thinking about. And then Jay, as Chief Justice, does something that no justice would do today, namely goes abroad on a diplomatic assignment for the president. He was our Secretary for Foreign Affairs. Third, he was the most religious of the leading founding fathers. Um, particularly in his retirement years, but even before, John Jay was a man who spent time each day reading his Bible, contemplating the eternal truths.